Let's speak about the most important year of your MBBS. No, it's not the final year of MBBS. It is in fact the second year of MBBS. Now, if you're wondering why, well, that's because second year is a transition between your preclinical subjects and your clinical subjects, which you'll learn during your third and fourth year of MBBS. And it is these subjects which you'll learn in second year, which are going to act as the foundation for your final year subjects. So if they're really sorted, I guarantee you that your third and final year subjects are going to be way, way easier to learn. In this video, I'll be covering everything you need to know about your second year of MBBS. How do you approach second year keeping in mind the next exit examination? How do you manage the clinics and extracurricular activities? As well as I'll also be explaining what to do if you're planning to prepare for USMB or PLAP or any other international examination. So let's get started. Let me just introduce myself if you don't know yet. I am Omar Wahmak, a final year MBBS student studying at Gama Medical College, Tarikat. During my second year of MBBS, by the grace of God and Hindulida, I was able to score a distinction in all the three subjects and I had a total of more than 80 percentage. So with that, let's get started. So first let's set the bare minimum standard which you need to achieve by the end of your second year. So you need to be able to do three things. That's the bare minimum standard. Firstly, you need to understand diagnosis and prescriptions when someone, when your family or your relative or a patient you see in the clinics, when they show you a report of a CT or when they show you a report of an MRI, you need to be able to understand the medical jargon which is written inside it. That's something that you can actually understand by the end of your second year and that is the bare minimum standard you need to keep for yourself. So finally, when you relate to your asmone, then that is the open, that is the issue, that is the portal, and then that is scan, and then that is. When someone asks you that question, you need to be able to explain to them what it is. Secondly, about drugs and prescription forms. So people will come to you, your relatives will come to you with certain drugs, asking why the doctor prescribed it, what is its side effect, and you need to be able to explain it, which class of drug it belongs to, and what is the major side effect which is associated with that drug. To do that, you need to have an understanding of pharmacology, which you will be learning in your second year. Finally, the third bare minimum standard which you need to achieve is you have to have an understanding of the clinics. And by that, what I mean is that you need to at least know where all the departments are present in your college. So you need to know where the operation theaters are, you need to know where the OPs are, where the wants are, where the urology department is, where so-and-so department is, and so on. So you need to have a basic understanding of the departments and how they function in your clinic. So far we have discussed about the bare minimum. So what is the ideal standard? The ideal standard which you need to strive to achieve during your second year. Again, I will shorten that to three. First one is complete robins for pathology. That's a great standard that you can strive for. It is definitely going to be worth it. Believe me, if it is possible for you to complete robins as much as you can during your second year, that's a really good goal to strive for. Because Robins is the best book which I have ever read in the whole of MBBS. The second target would be to do at least one procedure hands-on during your clinics. Now this is something which I understand not every student nor every college actually allows you to do especially during your third semester. But if it is possible for you to do something, some procedure hands-on by yourself in the clinics under the guidance of teachers, that would be a really good goal to strive for. Personally, during my second year and during my cash entry postings, I remember I had the opportunity to take GRBs, I had the opportunities to take a lot of BPs. I also had the great honor of suturing a broken scalp. A patient came to the cash and team with a broken scalp after a fight, after a trauma. And the surgery resident who was present there, she was kind enough to help some of us suture that scan. So that's really a good goal to strive for during your second year. And finally, it's about scoring a distinction in all the three subjects. So you have to understand that Distinctions doesn't mean that you have completed the subjects and distinctions don't mean that you will necessarily have a great clinical knowledge in the future. But there is one thing that these distinctions signify and that is you have an above average level knowledge of the subject compared to the others. Now that's what distinctions actually signify and that's a good goal to be striving for. Having said that, now let's move into the individual subjects and how do you approach them. You have to understand that second year, I would say, it has this domino effect and it's almost like solving a puzzle. If I give you 50 random pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and tell you to solve them, initially it's going to be way too hard. You don't know where to start. It looks like a lot of medical jargons, especially in pharmacology. You open the pharmacology theory Tribadi textbook and all you can see is a lot of drug names which you cannot even pronounce. Okay, I'll open the microbiology textbook. Everything looks like the same. Every bacteria, every fungus, every virus, it all looks like the same. And you're wondering, how do you even learn all of this stuff in one year? 
But believe me, it's like solving that puzzle. The initial 10 to 20 pieces of the puzzle, it's very hard to get them. But once you can arrange that 10 20 pieces, but the remaining pieces can be arranged and the puzzle can be completed with the help of the domino effect. Where by the end of 20 pieces, the other remaining pieces can be easily understood and easily put one after the other. The same phenomena happens in your second year. When you start, you have no idea, but as you cover each chapter in each subject, as you cover each drug, as you cover each infectious agent, things start to really make a lot of sense. You start to understand that there is a lot of common themes when it comes to drugs or microbes, and using that common themes, you can actually learn really smarter and faster. Now, let's start with pathology. As I've said, the goal that you need to be striving for is to complete Robin. So if you're wondering which of the books you need to be following reading your second year, I have already done a video on that and that's over here. I'm not going to mention that in this video, you can do send this video, it will be put in the description. Pathology, you have the generic pathology part and the systemic pathology part. You need to understand that before we start with the general pathology, because everything that you learn in general pathology, that will be applied in the systemic pathology when you learn the different systems. Because in your general pathology, you are going to learn the very basics that will be used everywhere. You'll be learning about inflammation, which is kind of present in almost every disease. You'll be also be learning in detail about the basics of cancer, which will be applicable to all the cancers that you'll learn during your clinics and during your second year. That is why the general pathology part is really, really important. And before you start any systemic pathology, you should start with the general pathology. Tip to learn faster and a smart way of learning is by combining the integrated topics. So parts like immunity or some diseases like leprosy and tuberculosis, you will learn those diseases both in pathology and microbiology. The best way to learn these things is by integrating them together. And in learning that from pathology, you also check on the microbiology. What I did was I learned those topics only from one book. So I learned by entire immunity from microbiology of Burusha's three textbook. I did not refer to pathology for that thing and even for my pathology examinations I wrote what I learned from microbiology. Similarly for tuberculosis and leprosy I had learned those diseases from microbiology and I did not learn them separately for my pathology. The only additional thing which I learned in pathology is obviously the histopathological part where we'll have to describe the gross and microscopic features of each disease. This way of integration is a really smart way and easy way to learn things faster, better, and also it helps you to connect different subjects as well. Now, how do you know which topics to learn? Obviously, it is not possible to cover Robin's cover to cover from first page to end page because it's too vast. Secondly, when you're studying Robin's, always make notes of it because otherwise you'll not be able to revise what we have learned from Robin's. That brings the question, how do you know what to learn from Robin's? And for that, you have to have an idea of the topics which are taken in your classes. For that, you need to track down the topics which are taken in your theory classes by your college professors. Even if you don't listen to those lectures, even if you are unattentive during those lectures, at least you need to know which are the topics that these professors teach, so that later you can look those topics and study from Robbins. What I did was I used to track my lectures completely, I used to track my attendance completely during my second year, and this is something which I have been doing even to this day, even during my final year, this, this is something which is extremely helpful for me. I would say this is one of the most important steps which I took. That I decided to track my entire academics using my Notion template. Now if you want to get this template which I've been using for the past three years to track literally everything happening in my college life, click on the description below. No, this video is not sponsored by Notion, even though I do wish one day Notion will sponsor my videos. So next up we have Microbiology. I have used the Abu Bashar's research textbook and Microbiology, there is this general part and again there is the systemic part. The general part I find, unlike in pathology, it's kind of really theoretical and fact based. So it doesn't really help us a lot like in pathology. When it comes to the systemic part, as I said, it's like completing a puzzle. With each bacteria, with each virus or each parasite or fungus that you learn, it becomes easier. You will identify patterns. What I used to do was I used to watch Aburva Shastri Sa's lectures which are available on free on YouTube. And part of that was available on Diziner which was an app platform. I used to watch those videos and believe me it was one of the smartest decisions which I took during my second day. Because who can teach a book better than the author himself? I would underline the parts which Sir will teach in his classes and that's all. That's all that is needed during your second year of microbiology. 
If you don't have access to search classes, I really suggest you to study the minor boxes which are present in the textbook. I would also tell you to focus on the bold letters because those are the important points. Those are the high end points which you need to know during your second year of MBBS. But as I have said, it takes time. It will be difficult initially. But believe me, if you stick to the plan, it becomes way, way easier in the end. Finally, about pharmacology. Now, when you start second year, most of us are going to be focusing on pharmacology or not, even though pathology is the largest subject. And the reason for that is we get really worried with all the medical jargons that you're learning, pharmacology, all the complex drugs. So how do you approach pharmacology? You have to understand that the order you need to study for pharmacology is you start with the classification. Then you learn about the pharmacokinetics. Then you learn about the mechanism of action, the side effects, contraindications, and finally about the drug interaction. Now, pharmacology, you have to understand it in first principle. What I mean by that is, when you study classification, there are several classifications for a group of drugs. The only classification which will really help you, or the only one that is relevant, is going to be the classification based on the mechanism of action. So, different drugs belonging to the same category, where do these different drugs act? What is the difference between an AC inhibitor and a beta blocker? Even though both are used as anti-hypertensive drugs, what is the difference in their action? So you need to learn classification based on their mechanism of action. Once you learn the mechanism of action, then you have to go through the pharmacokinetic properties. And in pharmacokinetic properties, there is this code ADMP. For each drug, you need to know how it is absorbed, where it is distributed, where it is metabolized, where it is excreted. For most drugs, it's very easy. Most of them are orally given, so absorbed in the GIT. Then most of these are metabolized in liver and excreted in kidney. So why you need to know these things is the side effect, the contraindication and the drug interactions. They are based on the mechanism of action and the pharmacokinetic properties. For example, any drug which is metabolized in the liver and excreted in the kidney, what is one contraindication for giving that drug? Obviously, that is going to be a chronic liver disease or a chronic kidney disease. Because in these two conditions, when the liver or kidneys don't function, you cannot give that drug. The drug will not be metabolized at all excreted from the body and that will lead to drug toxicity. Another point is about side effects. Not really hard to understand the side effects of drug. There is usually three reasons why drugs cause side effects. First one is toxicity. Any drug with its normal mechanism of action, when that reaches a toxic level, that is going to produce a side effect. So if you know the mechanism of action, you can predict that side effect. Secondly, there is going to be the side effect due to extra action. So drugs may not have just a singular action, it may act on multiple systems. You may be giving a drug for CNS but it may also act on other systems as well like the cardiovascular system. So that extra action which you don't roll off a drug, that could be a side effect. And finally, there are some common adverse effects that can be applicable to most drugs like nausea and vomiting, like uh, allergic reactions. If certain people who are prone to allergies who have a history of allergy in their family, they are more likely to develop allergy or in some cases, in severe cases, they may even develop the severe form of allergy known as Stephen Johnson syndrome. That's how you understand pharmacology. Now what I did during my second year, and once again this was also one of the smart decisions which I took during my second year, was to refer to Dr. Gobindrai Gurkhsa's lectures. I used to refer to his personal app and complete my pharmacology. After watching his lectures, I would refer Patmaja Man's textbook. And that was it. That's how I completed pharmacology. Now let's speak about the clinics and the clinical subjects. When you start your second year, one of the most amazing things, one of the most beautiful experiences of second year is obviously finally having the opportunity to meet the patients. It's really exciting to visit the operation theater for the first time to see a surgery live happening in front of you. It's one of the most beautiful experiences in NBDs. So don't miss out on these opportunities. Even though you don't learn a lot of clinical side during your third semester portion, it is very important for you to experience these things. During my second year alone, I had seen several RT cases in Kashmir. I had the opportunities to see horrific burns cases. I still remember during one of the Kashmir postings, I saw a patient with severe bare burns like grade 2 or grade 3. And the nurse was literally peeling off the skin of that patient and the patient was really crying in agony. Even though the patient was on opioid painkillers, that's how painful and horrific those ones were. I also had the opportunity to see snake bites, I had the opportunity to see rat poisoning, I had the opportunity to see minors who were brought dead to the hospital 
after suicide. He had a lot of chances and opportunities even from his second years to see these things as well if you are really attentive. As I said in the beginning of this video, to be able to do one procedure, if that is possible, that's really a good God, even though that is not necessary at all. Now, what should you learn from the clinics? When it comes to a knowledge point of view, you have to learn to interact with patients and build a rapport. Those are the two most important skills you need to develop by the end of second year. Take a basic history. You need to be able to at least understand the basics. You'll only master the art of history taking by the end of your final year. But you need to start taking history from patients right from the third semester itself. That's really gonna help you in the final year. Of course, you won't be knowing about negative history. You won't be knowing about what are the additional questions you need to ask. Because as I've said, to have that level of knowledge, you need to at least have complete your second year. But do start taking history. Do start doing examination which you have learned in your practical classes in physiology. So especially in medicine, you can learn the systemic examination which you have learned in physiology and apply that to real patients. It's really exciting once you start to see findings like extensive response, like absent tendon reflexes, hearing murmurs, hearing crepitations. All of these are actually exciting things to do as a third sem student. Don't worry too much about the knowledge. Don't worry too much about not knowing surgery or medicine or obstetrics. But all of the extra calculus. Having said everything so far, you might be thinking that Oh, it's all about academics. Second year is all about academics. It's all about stress. That's not the message that I'm actually trying to convince in this video. Second year is also actually the time where you can spend the most on extra academics. Second year is also the time where I had kind of explored many different things from the extra curricular front as well. It was unlike the first year where you have to learn a lot of anatomy and where you have to sit through boring dissection classes. In second year, it's comparatively free. So it's also one of the best years to try something else, to focus on our extra concurrence as well. But always remember that your primary goal is to become a doctor. So no matter what extracurricular activity you are indulging in, always prioritize your studies as well on the side. It's a great year to involve in the engineering activities in your college. It's a great year to involve in sports, arts and literature. I have personally had lots of hobbies during my second year. Second year was the time I started building websites and start and designing website. Currently, I run three websites. It was also the year where I started learning Arabic. It was also the year where I kind of started with this video making, media editing stuff. So second year is really a nice time for extra curriculars as well. Before we end this video, let's discuss about preparing for examinations like USMLE or PLAN. For next examination, as I've mentioned in the video on books to follow in second year, you do not have to join a coaching platform this year. It's not necessary. It's not necessary to join a coaching institute, it's not necessary to start solving QBACs. As I said, focus completely on the second year subjects. Once you enter the third year or your final year, you can go completely on these apps and you can start solving QBACs. If you're planning to prepare for USMLE and take your residency in the US, second year is a really good time to start with first aid. By the first aid and whenever you are learning each chapter from pathology or microbiology or pharmacology, Revise those chapters using your first state and the Boards and Beyond videos. These two resources are really going to be helpful for your USMT preparation. And second year, I would say, is the ideal time to start your preparation for the step one examinations. You try to complete as much as possible of your first year during your second year examinations so that you can confidently give your step examination during your third year, which is the most ideal time to give. If you're taking the plan route and trying to settle in the NHS or in UK, then you don't have to do anything special during your second year because PLAB is an examination that you write after your MBBS degree. So you write your PLAB 1 examination after you complete your 5.5 years of MBBS along with the internship. So you don't have to do anything special during your second year. There is nothing else to prepare for. As I said, focus on these second year subjects really well. Believe me, if you do these subjects really well, you'll thank me later. So that's it for this video. If you found this video to be helpful, do hit the like button and the subscribe button and definitely share this video with your fellow second year American students. Let them benefit from this video as well. See you again in the next video inshallah. Until then, it's Solo Muhammad. Thank you.